for more on those security stories and a discussion on gender violence, security analyst Tim Olodo joins us now. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Olodo, for joining us. Uh, you must have heard the developments recently in Edo State, uh, South South Nigeria, with the killing of the young lady, uh, University of Benin. There, there's also been, you know, a lot of rape cases across the country. What is your reading of this situation? Why are we having this happening? Factors or many drivers to some of these uh, incidents. Uh, however, that said, there should be no justification for uh, killing or rape of anybody uh, in a country that has law and order. And I'm quite pleased that uh, the police and you know, try have at least gotten some result by arresting a suspect. He remains a suspect. And although they said they lifted the fingerprint, so a lot of us, you know, that work within the security, you know, sector are looking forward to, you know, more of this kind of arrest. And in fact, an effective uh, use of the database for people that have committed crime, because individuals don't wake up one morning and commit this kind of crime. They are individuals who are predators, who are living in our communities, and they need to be monitored in advanced society or in, the, in a proper democratic society. Some of these individuals will be under probation. There will be, you know, people will be working with them within, this, within the system. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, this will be uh, a step in the right direction, and most of these rape cases will be dealt with, because information available in the public domain reveals that a lot of rape cases go on unresolved. All right, um, Tabitha, well, talk to us. You just mentioned and actually hit on a very major point, talking about people establishing a sex offenders register. But pending when all this is in place, what can the female, young females or those vulnerable do to ensure that they don't find themselves in this very, very dark place? I think it's important to get to set the record straight. We should not be demanding extra, you know, uh, extra work or extra uh, action from a woman or from a man in a country where there's law and order. Of course, you know, if there are, you know, blind spot, people should not go there. But we're talking of a church environment where because there is no library, the, the young lady has decided to go into the church environment, which is a sanctuary and to read. So for anybody to go into that place, that person must be callous and diabolical. And such actions should be dealt with. But I think the most important thing is education, education, education. We need to educate our youth that rape or uh, dealing with girls or dealing with even men, you know, with that consent is unacceptable in a democratic society. But more importantly, we should not be telling ladies you have to dress in a particular way or to be saying to ladies you cannot work after 7 p.m. at night. Where, what, where are, we, are we living in a, in, a, in a dark era? No, we are not. So I think both ways, education is important. Why preventive measures are important? But I think it is important also that we ensure that individuals who are receptive or vulnerable to uh, being violent should not be on the streets. At all. Well, Nigeria did launch the register for sex offenders last year. While the country tries to develop that register, you are calling for the establishment of a gender violence reduction unit uh, within the Nigeria police force. Uh, what exactly is that, and what will it achieve in curbing, if not eradicating, this gender violence uh, we're seeing? It's quite interesting that you did uh, highlight that. I think that was part of the reasons, things that I believe is quite important, that when you have specific units like that, <clears throat> what normally happens is that you have specialist team, individuals that could actually work with families or you know, families or individuals who have become victims of gender violence. But what I've actually realized in the last 24 hours is that actually the Nigerian police force indeed does have a unit that deals with this kind of incident. Now, I'm surprised that 
I'm hearing it for the first time. And many people are hearing it for the first time, but within the police cycle, they are aware that such unit exists. So what that tells you is that there is not enough information and these individuals are not visible. Because in a, in a, in a normal setting, as I've been a former police officer myself within you know, the UK, I know that some of these officers will go into communities work with communities, go into schools, you know, and ensure that they keep a tap and, you know, educate the community. But when you have a unit that is just stuck there, that are not actually visible to the community, then how would people know who to engage with? So the police said they have this unit. I think what will be important going forward is that this unit engage with the community more to build community confidence and reassurance, work with agencies, and NGOs that actually work in this field that know what is happening at the grassroots and ensure that this kind of crime does not happen again because it is a disgrace to the nation, you know, and it affects the Nigerian PLC, which we are all trying to play. All right, um, Tamitofo, also, what can policymakers do to ensure that there is a massive deterrent from rape generally? I think just like I mentioned earlier, I think education, education, education is important. Boys should be told that, you know, consent is important in any relationship. You know, to even to hold somebody's hand, you need consent. Otherwise, it's a, it's a common assault. Now we're so, talking about from the angle of policy, where policy formation mm -hmm. and formulation, not just in terms of education right now, what can the government do to ensure that there is massive deterrent and anybody that wants to engage in rape would think twice about this. I think it's important to highlight that policy comes as a result of legislative provisions. The legislative provisions are there. It is now for policy makers to draw up guidelines about it. How do you train people within how do you train people within the community to know that this is not right? How do you train people within the public sector to be able to know what to look out for? Uh, you know, issues of, you know, uh, rape kits being available in hospital. Those are part of policy implementation. So even if you have the legislation, you don't have the policy design and implementation framework, then what happens is that the policy is just something that is meant for the being. So legislation is there good to improve, but we don't even need to reinvent these policies. Around the world, policies have been developed. All we need to do is localize those policies so that they are effective and you know, good for our community and that people are engaged and involved in the implementation of those policies. Well, thank you very much, Timutokwa Olodo, uh, security analyst, for that uh, insight on the latest development here.